Welcome to the Popcorn Confessional, where my wife and I talk about the movies we just saw at the movie theaters. Now, this one's a little bit different. It's on a streaming platform. It's on Shredder right now, and that is Jacob's Wife. It is from the director of Girl on a Third Floor, Travis Stevens, and it's a multi-layered story within a horror movie with a twist of comedy. Now guys, if you've seen the trailer, you can see the 80s cheese fest kind of bleeding off the TV screen at home or the phone or whatever you're watching your trailers on, you can see it. If you like movies like Fright Night and Return of the Living Dead, then you're probably going to like this. Only, this goes a little bit deeper because it's not just a comedy horror with a vampire thrown in. This is actually a story about a aging married couple and what they're going through. Now you have Pastor Jacob, who's played by Larry Fizenden. Fizenden. And he is one of those old school type of guys. You know, he's the one where children don't speak unless you're spoken to. He's got to walk in front of the woman, the wife. He's in charge and he doesn't want to hear anybody else speak unless he gives them that permission. So his wife, Anne, played by Barbara Crampton, uh, who you may know from Bride of the Reanimator or the Reanimator. Reanimator. See, she doesn't watch these cheese I don't. I don't. She's missing out. I watch the cheesy 80s uh, romantic comedies, you know. Um, so anyway, she's the timid trophy wife, church mouse. Uh, she falls in line when she gets looked at a certain way. <laughs> no. Um, as a viewer, especially a female viewer, this does begin to tick you off. Yeah, it begins to tick me off too. So depending on how you are with those type of films... You know, us nerd box people here being formerly known as women in horror, seeing women treated that way is not something to watch. Now, let's get back to the story. Unknown to the townsfolk, an entity has settled into their small little town. And people begin to go missing. And that's typically preceded by rats showing up. Now, the entity, who we will know or come to know as Master, eventually crosses paths with Anne and embraces her. Uh, soon after that, Anne uh, begins to undergo changes. Uh, she's finding her confidence, becoming more seductive and empowered. Uh, but then that causes her husband to grow concerned. Yeah, good you old know, Jacob Pastor. You know, she's not falling in line. Um, and he begins questioning their relationship um, until he discovers that Anne is no longer the mortal person that he married. Yeah, there's a scene where he goes into the house and there she is decked out in flaming hot red, uh, I don't know, nightgown or something. and flaming Like red a negligee. Lipsticks. Yeah. Yeah. So you should have seen and him And the red run. lipstick and heels to match. And yep. he ran like a church mouse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How this movie plays out is you have Jacob that is seeing all these changes happen within his wife. He stumbles into some things by accident, and he's forced to choose whether he is going to support his wife and feeding her urges, or his faith. And it's an interesting way for it to play out the rest of the way of the movie. Now, I have to tell you, you haven't seen Barbara Crampton in many movies. Mm -mm. She did an excellent job of carrying this movie, delivering a tr full transformation of character from that timid church mouse all the way to this seductus, even at her age, which there's no problems with that. And I have to say that uh, it wasn't done cheesy. It was well delivered. Yeah, I feel like it um, It was done in a way that you would expect it to be done. Uh, you know, subtle changes, changing your hair, changing the way you dress, maybe wearing a little bit more makeup or a racier color. You know what I'm talking about, ladies. Now, I have to say that uh, Larry was the perfect person to play against her because he balanced it out. He balanced the movie out. And you really didn't need any of the other characters in the movie, which they don't really invest much in. So mm -hmm. they're no. there. They get you to the next point. 
they kind of done with them. Mm-hmm. And I don't really care. I didn't really... That's not what I was looking for in this film. So no. if you're looking for you know in-depth characters in a vampire movie, this is not the one for you. But if you no. want to have a good time, sit back and drink some drinks, this is definitely going to be a fun one. Now, The Master, maybe about five to ten minutes screen time. Yeah. With that... But she's it, she is played by Bonnie Aarons, who um, a lot of you horror people will know as um, Valak from The Nun. Um, and even though she has little screen time, her presence is known. I think she has maybe one or two lines in the entire movie. Yeah, yeah. which is more than what she's had in yeah. the uh, Conjuring universe. Mm-hmm. But uh, it was nice to see her in the role. Nice person in real life. Mm-hmm. But it. Her role was like an homage to Nosferatu. Definitely. That was my first thought. And again, I don't really watch these types of films. So for me to know that, Mm -hmm. that says something. Yep. So definitely a a good role for her to play now. Uh, I have to say, when it comes to the Cheese Fest movies that we've seen of the the latter years, this is probably one of the standout ones that come to mind that I would go back to and watch. Maybe even tonight. Because it was just a fun film. And, I, you know, I am looking forward to watch it again. Now, how about you? Would you go back and watch it again? Um, well, I will say that when he first put it on, I, well, first of all, when people were telling me, watch Jacob's Wife, and they're like, it's a vampire movie. I'm like, oh, hell no. Um, 20 minutes in. 20 minutes in. Done. I was like, I'm done. I just want to go to bed. I, I don't want to watch this crap. Um, which is pretty typical of me with these films. Uh, but... He wouldn't budge, and I honestly didn't feel like getting up out of the reclining chair and going to bed. <laughs> so I continued to watch the movie, and as time went on, you know, it got some laughs out of me, and, um, you know, there was some cheesiness, but overall it was written really well for for the type of movie that it was. I'm going to have to say that the director, Travis Stevens, you got some kinky fetishes going on, huh? Uh, yeah. yeah. I'm calling the vampire master with yeah. the hot red lipstick uh-huh. and all this other stuff. Yeah. I think that he stole his wife's Fifty Shades books. I think so. Now, if you've seen Girl on the Third Floor, which is not as good as this film, but it's a different type of horror film, mm-hmm. um, you'll get to see why I think he's living out some of his fantasies on screen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What better place to do it than in a horror movie? So, um, what's your rating? Okay, so I mean, initially going into the movie, I would have been like, I'm giving this an F, I'm done. Because I, again, just not really my thing. Um, But giving it a chance and watching it all the way through, I would go back and watch it again. And I would would give it a B. A B. Mm -hmm. So this movie was a B all the way through until... Yes, he shows up in his second film for this director here, and it was awesome. So that just gives it a half a point right there, because it is CM Punk, and he's done a pretty good job in the genre, switching from wrestling into movies. So be perfect, definitely. Now, if you do watch this movie again, it's playing on Shudder right now. Hopefully by the time you see this, it's still there. If not, I would even recommend going out and buying a copy of it because you're going to enjoy it. If you like Fright Night, Turn the Living Dead, remember, you'll like this movie. But tell us what you thought about the film after you've seen it. Or what other cheesy horror movies that have come out recently that we may have missed that you, can you recommend to us? And maybe we'll do a review on it in the future episode of The Popcorn Confessional. Until then, like, subscribe, And then ring that bell so you know when we uh, release other reviews. Now, this week we're going to be releasing a couple of reviews. But after that, it'll most likely be once a week. But there's other content on our channel that you want to watch. So there are interviews. We do talk about independent films and independent filmmakers and how you can support them. They do need your help compared to some of these big Hollywood studios putting out crap. We have some pop culture shows coming up that talk about the five things that you should check out. Five things you should avoid. And boy, there's one doozy of a list that is coming. Like a what the fuck. Yes, definitely. (laughs) I almost lost my hat. So again, like, subscribe, and ring that bell for notifications. And we'll see you at the next movie. See ya.